guys you're welcome thanks for clicking my name is bukumi so i fasted for seven days for ramadan as a non-muslim life changer 1.6 billion muslims fast for ramadan each year that's about 20 percent of the world's population as you might know i'm originally from portugal where only about 50,000 muslims live it's only about half a percent of the entire country's population so for this reason i never had too much direct contact with islam religion and culture but this year i moved to the uk where islam is now the second largest religion there is an estimate 3.4 million muslims living in the uk right now mm. with 1 million living in london alone i wanted to learn more about Muslims and Islam and so I set myself a challenge to fast for Ramadan for a week. This video was made to help educate people who might want to learn more about Muslim religion and culture and about my experience. It absolutely comes from a place of respect and willingness to learn and to practice an open mind. So as you may know, during Ramadan, Muslims fast for a whole month, but fasting doesn't just refer to food. So during Ramadan, from just before sunrise until just after sunset, Muslims abstain from eating and drinking, but as well from bad habits, such as being disrespectful, cruel or selfish, smoking or vaping, gossiping, swearing, fighting, arguing, and from having sexual relations. Muslims pray five times a day and for this week I will meditate at the same times of prayer. So these are the basics but I didn't know much else about Ramadan so I reached out to someone who does. I reached out to a Sunni J who is a Canadian humanitarian and activist for Muslim rights. Hi, how are you? In respect to the culture, what is the purpose of Ramadan in the Muslim culture? So uh, Ramadan is for a lot of different reasons and many people do it for different reasons. The main one obviously is to fast from food or water. We're sacrificing that to feel what the needy feel around the world. Because charity is such an important part of Islam, we put ourselves in the shoes of those who have nothing and it's sort of like a form of sacrifice. The other reason is the spiritual cleanse as well. All these little habits, these bad habits that people might have, you know, we might think we say little white lies without even thinking about it. Little things like that. We are much more conscious and aware of it during this month. Even scientifically or psychologically, a habit can form within starting at 21 days. So within 21 to 29 days, you start to eliminate bad habits that hopefully will stick throughout you know, the entire year. It seems like it's a very peaceful, enlightening month. You just stop and you reflect and you try to be better. I think that's really beautiful. So what does a normal Ramadan day look like? I've had two different experiences in the West, in Canada and the UK, and as well in the United Arab Emirates. In Canada and UK, I would work full time. Basically, I just go to work, do what I have to do during mm. prayer times. We're very fortunate to always have a prayer room. Uh, and then when we get home, we prepare for the Ramadan dinner. So maybe we have neighbors coming over. During the pandemic, it's been a little bit hard. Yeah. So, But typically we just have, just it's a massive feast. Sometimes when we make enough food, we go out to the neighbors or we give them sweets as well. And it's just about sharing our cultures with our neighbors, so especially in Canada and the UK. There's people from everywhere. So we just love to share. Back in the United Arab Emirates, it was very similar, but I think that you have more of Ramadan spirit. So like just in the West, we have like the Christmas spirit. Spirit. you know you feel it yeah. <laughs> it was always about neighbors helping out each other and feeding each other for example when i lived in abu dhabi there was police cars going around and they would stop people closer to uh sunset and they would just hand out cartons of food to everyone oh. um and then the more wealthier families as well they'd open their gates and they just have all the street workers everyone coming in so no one would ever go hungry and there's always food and they did this both for sunrise and for sunset just you know to help people and encourage them also, you know, to for fasting for Ramadan. So I went to the grocery store and stocked up for the week. Then I began my challenge. Mm, they want. Mm, so you break your fast 4 a.m. Oh, okay, fine. Oh, anytime from 4 a.m. Okay. Good morning. So, 
Last night was a bit rough and I did something wrong. First prayer time is around 3.45 yeah, a.m. So I set up an alarm to wake up and do some meditation at that time. I thought I'm going back to sleep and then I'm going to wake up at around five and half breakfast. So I'll be eating as close to the sunrise as possible. So I will have, I guess, less time in between the first meal and the last meal of the day. Um, turns out that's not correct. <laughs> so it turns out that the time of the first prayer should be the last time you eat. So you should eat and then pray, pray or meditate and then go back to sleep and then the sun will rise and well, then you I thought carry you should pray, day and eat, the pray, sunset sleep. and then you eat okay. again and the reason for this is because actually the time of the first prayer is when you kind of see the dimmest, faintest first light of the sun in the sky during the night that was wrong but we live and learn and hopefully tomorrow I will do better it makes me a little bit nervous because it's like I'm eating for the last time at 3 or 4 in the morning and then I can't eat until 8 at night that makes me a bit nervous I'm not gonna lie but it's also better because I only need to wake up once during the night whereas last night was just horrible I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and I did some guided meditation for sleep but I was actually not able to sleep <laughs> now it's 12.30 my stomach's kind of hey. asking for food but I can't drink any water so that's going to be maybe tough I think the importance of doing this and taking this seriously is that you take the time to stop and think for me, okay, I have this rough night of sleep whereas many people, they have to get up really early work Good night shifts for them, it's not like it's not easy. it doesn't get to be an annoyance it's what they have to do to mm. get by or to be able to work and the same like and during the day without eating or drinking I'm thinking like, oh, it's so hard but when you think of it, I can just go to the kitchen and grab something to eat if I want to when in the world there's people that they don't know when their next meal is going to be even previously in my life I had times where, you know, I wasn't as stable as I am now and there's people that go through so much I can't complain because when the sunset comes I'll go to my kitchen and I'll have food to eat honestly, like it seems so small because we are privileged enough to have it but it's definitely something to be so grateful for that we don't have to worry about when we're going to eat next and if we have anything to eat or if you're going to go hungry to bed so that's the that's the whole point of this and yeah so let's see how the day goes it's not too far off only seven and a half hours to go it's going to be fine okay it's the end again. But she did study the Quran. Because during the day your stomach okay. kind of shrinks a bit. They are not eating for so many hours. I'm breaking the fast with just a few dead sands. Water to just get the stomach used to having something in there. Man. Mm. I'm so proud. And now I have a little meditation. And then I'm going to cook a mad chili. Just to watch. This food is in large <laughs> quantity. I'm surprised hey. how I handled the fast. Thought I was gonna die. But why will you be fasting? You're not I praying. Think. Unless you pray or read the Quran. I'm so grateful for this meal. Like, like I can feel my body just being like so energized right now. But to be honest, today is Sunday, so I didn't really do much all day. I'm curious to see if tomorrow it will be different because I'll be working during the day. Mm. Okay, is she praying or listening to Quran? So last night I woke up, had my meal and meditated in the correct order. I was so not hungry when I woke up, but I knew that I just had to eat. I 
sort of force fed myself and try to drink as much water as possible but when i woke up this morning my body just screamed at me like i want water <laughs> and i think that has to do with the day being a work day i just figured out that my working days are very much punctuated by what time i eat i usually take the chance to go to the kitchen make a tea have a few biscuits something as a way to take a break from work and today i really didn't have any sort of excuse to take a break from work so for example now it's one o'clock i'm on my lunch break and usually my lunch break is a one hour slot that i always take in the middle of my work day to make sure that i stop and i have a break and i have my food and today i just don't know what to do <laughs> but i'm going to be tough my dinner is going to be super delicious tonight i just need to make it until then i can do it i'll be fine Now is the part wait. She's meditating on is it the ranch meditation? With the body still getting accustomed to the day without eating or drinking, it was easy to spend the day thinking about food. So I became interested in learning how Muslims make sure to stay healthy and strong during Ramadan. When I was in college, I had a teacher and he always liked to tell the story that he taught in Dubai at one point. During this time of the year, he would go to class and he would see like sometimes the girls would be so very pale. Every now and again, like one of them would like faint in class. He said that used to happen regularly. In terms of health, what do you think is the effect from your experience the thing is that's why you have to eat healthy a lot of times it depends on the culture that they're from it depends on what they're eating as well and the climate so i was in the uae dubai and abu dhabi and fasting there was not easy because the days were actually much longer and it was extremely extremely hot and their local food was more saturated fats more salt things here in the west close early <laughs> in Abu Dhabi, you'd find us hanging out at the mall at 3 a.m. <laughs> so malls would be open because it's Ramadan. A lot of people would not sleep at all. So what they choose to do is actually stay up all night to spend time with their families, to mm -hmm. do their prayers. The oh, way that people were there is a lot of times they were night like owls. So they actually did not sleep at all. I think oh. that they should have gotten maybe more rest, yeah. drank enough water. And again, it goes back to what you're eating. If you are trying to be more healthy conscious, so if you're eating things that are packed and you know protein and fiber and more natural foods that i think you might stay the same or end up losing a little bit of weight depending on what your goal is now the complaint that i've had from a lot of my relatives is they actually gain weight because of okay. just the rich foods that we have and then people end up overeating as well because <laughs> they feel like they have to make up for the day if you are sick you don't fast if you are pregnant you don't fast when you're on your period you don't fast even if you were to i don't know get into a an accident and cut yourself or something you don't fast if you have mm. also any conditions such as diabetes cancer any kind of conditions that you need medication for as well fast. you don't fast Ooh, it's wow. just okay. only if you are strong and Maybe able to As the days went by, my body became accustomed to the rhythm and it became easier not to think about food or drink during the day. It was amazing to realize the amount of temptations that we face every day, but for me it became even more important to stay focused, practice patience and remember the reason why I was doing this. I counted my calories for the week and I realized that I was actually ingesting the amount of calories that I would eat in a normal day but I was just doing it in the span of 7 hours. It's pretty much like intermittent fasting but the difference is that you're spending the majority of the time that you're not eating awake. So when Aunt Susan starts bragging about discovering intermittent fasting and not eating during two thirds of the day, just a reminder that Muslims have been doing this for 1300 years already. And here I am, completing seven days of Ramadan. This was a tough week for me, but I learned so much and I can only express my admiration and my respect for the Muslims who practice this every single year. Mm. I didn't know this, but inherently Muslims are some of the most charitable people that 
exist. Muslims are required to donate at least 2.5% of their profitable wealth every year to the poor and needy, and many of them choose to do so during the month of Ramadan. I myself normally donate sporadically, but this definitely inspired me to make sure that I'm more proactive in donating frequently. This week I chose to donate 2.5% of my monthly savings to charity. It's definitely a habit that I think I would like to keep and continue. I hope this video taught you something. I definitely learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching and to all of my Muslim friends, Ramadan Mubarak. So my Muslim family, Ramadan Mubarak. Yes, I really learned a lot guys as a non-Muslim. I think I should try it, right? Maybe I should give it a try before the end of this month. This is, okay, it's one month, right? That means it's ending, it's going to be concluding around that should be every level or so so maybe i might i'm still thinking but i'm not sure maybe i should just give it a try and fast for seven days all what she did was to you know fast and meditate i'm sure she was just listening to the quran recitation but she does not have a quran so i know most of us would have expected that to have you know gotten a book a, a copy of quran jot down what she learned from the quran but you know she does not know much about islam she just want to you know get to understand how it feels to fast as a muslim what they go through to communicate or to commune with allah so most of the parts she showed was where she breaks three o'clock the first day was really tough for her because she supposed she was supposed to meditate before breaking um i think she's supposed to meditate after eating but i thought you have to meditate pray break your fast pray sleep then um i don't know i think you guys i think i don't know i need to be sure uh you break your fast twice in a day that should be early in the morning before sunset and i think around um maybe one or so 1 p.m if i'm wrong please correct me guys and i love the fact that she communicated with a muslim lady getting more knowledge about islam and she explained a little lot about islam why they fast and the, the reason for fasting is to commune with allah and it's a one month fasting you abstain from food and water and just commune with god and it is happening i think it's the ramadan started yesterday if i'm right this should be day two and i'm going to be uploaded i don't know when i'm going to upload this video so she went ahead to do it and one thing i got from this is that when you when, uh, if you're sick you, you are not permitted to fast if you have a um health challenge you don't need to fast when you are when a lady's on a menses you don't need to fast when you so i love the fact that they you know some certain people are not supposed to fast because for health wise and you have to eat healthy because this lady said it that anytime she goes to class and Muslims are fasting and is doing that Ramadan period. You see some students fainting in class, some, you know, totally looking so weak and tired, you know. So they say you should eat LD, eat LD, wife breaking your fast, drink enough water before you, you know, continue your fast. And she kept on doing that. She fasted for seven days. And meditated on the Quran recitation. That was what she did. She didn't read the Quran. She didn't, you know, you know. She just did it on her own, just to have a feeling of I, uh, just to know how it feels to be a Muslim to fast for a whole month. A whole month is not easy. And wow, I learned a lot. And one thing I also grabbed from this, or I also learned from this video, is the fact that Muslims are meant to give charity know every year like i think 2.5 percent of their or some a percentage from their income they have to give it to charity and most muslims do that on ramadan period it's not a must it's not compulsory you must give out charity your percentage of charity during that ramadan period but mostly muslim tend to do that so they fast because they want to out they want to have a feeling of how the needy the people that are in need what they go through, people that don't have the privilege to have food, water, shelter, what they go through, and also a means of communicating with God or commune with God. Well, guys, uh, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe before the 
30 days is over. Maybe I might try one week or maybe three days of fasting. Let me see. It is to fast. But let me know the actual time to break the fast. Is it 4 a.m. or is it, I don't know. I, I think from 3 a.m. you have to break your fast. Then there's, there's another one you break during the day. I think around 1 p.m. So let me know. I'm kind of confused because of the way the lady was breaking her fast. So I was, I was seeing something like 1 p.m. I want to know whether there's that time to break your fast and no let me just give it a just fasting for a start like the way the lady did at home let me i might i swear try it let me see how it goes i don't know but i think so let's see how it goes i might give it a try well that was a beautiful video thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one